Right, hello ladies and gentlemen, geeks, geeks, S's, nerds, nerd S's and trekkies probably as well. And welcome to the Livy Lab. If you can hear the uh, noise, it's the blinds blowing in the wind because it's a rare sunny and warm day here in England. I'm presently waiting for a tea delivery which should be coming any second. Oh, here it comes. Found a video without tea and here comes my tea in a mega big cup. Look at that. Freshly delivered by Fluffy herself, who uh, many of you met during the show. Thank you very much, Fluffy. You're welcome. Warrr. Mm, tea. Mm. It's extra arsenic and it is as you like it. Oh, thank you. Right. Okay, okay. So, yes, uh, this video, as you probably read by the title, is for the pickups from Replay Play Expo 2014. And uh, once again, I'd like to take the uh, there's an opportunity to say to the organisers that this time, yes, it was a very well uh, organised retro event. It was very good. Thank you very much. Really enjoyed it this year. So, we're going to look at what we've got. And uh, I think we'll work our way up from small to large. Uh, because we got a few things. First of all, the smallest thing we got, sorting out over here, noises are full is uh, this Pac-Man game uh, for the Commodore 60, was this? Yeah, Commodore 64. This is from a Lucky Dip, it's a Pounder Dip, and uh, this came out. Pac-Man, Datasoft, no idea if it works, not tried it yet. But if not, we can still look at it on the SIO thing, so we win no matter what. And the other thing we got, for the Amstrad CPC 464 is Pictionary. Uh, that came out of the Lucky Dip 2. As uh, all its stuff. Great. And as is typical from the time, shows you the Amiga and the Amiga graphics on the back, which confused us initially because I didn't see Amstrad set and I didn't open it. So we thought it was for the Amiga, but it's not. It's for the Amstrad. Right, so that's from the Lucky Dip. Next, coming up in size, uh, we were leaving the venue uh, to go and get some stuff externally, and uh, what's oh, it is oh, I never forget the name of it. Never remember. Sorry, I can never remember the name of it. It's uh, oh, I'll put it here in the text. But anyway, he had a stall there, and he came. Chasing after me, shouting, Steven, Steven! So I actually thought I'd forgotten something, but I hadn't. He had this in his hand, and he said, Would you like to buy this for five English pound? It's uh, a special Star Trek Online box. I've never played Star Trek Online, never likely to play it, but as he chased me, I just couldn't say no, so I got it off him. It includes an exclusive t shirt which I'm wearing at the moment because I'm heathen and I opened it well. To be honest, it was already open, so there we go. Uh, map, which is great. Postcards, in-game uniforms. Ooh, and 30 days game time. Not going to open it now because uh, I think I might just have to uh, do this as a separate video. Okay, next up in size. And this is another unusual one. If you've seen the event video, you've probably seen a bit of footage related to this. So Steve Benley, well, you know, you know, all know Steve Benley, turned up and met him, and he had a carrier bag with him. And he says, opens the carrier bag, and he says, uh, "Do you want any games?" I think it says uh, he gets given a lot of games, and many turn out to be doubles. So he said, "No, I'll bring them to the show." And if you want them, just help yourself. So, I got myself my first ever Electron Games from Mr. Benway. We got Boxer. Yay. I've never had, an never held an Electron Game box before, so that's quite interesting. Uh, so, the Boxer. Also available, Hopper Freeform Arcadians. I think that when this one came out, uh, there weren't many games released for Electron. It must be, must be an early one. Very early. Uh, what we got? 1984. <laughs> okay. Uh, so we got Boxer. Uh, snapper. Bet you guess what? Bet you can't guess what that's a clone of. 
Uh, so a snapper there. Now, I don't have a cable for the tape drive to do these, but we do have a BBC Master with these games on, so it may work on there. But I'll try and get a tape drive. And something I've been looking for for a while, even though I haven't got the tape drive facility, is the introductory cassette for the Acorn Electron excrement. Uh, hopefully it's working, and we can have a look at that someday. That's quite interesting because it's for people who've never, at that time, used a computer before. So, nice introductory thing. Next is uh, changing format slightly here. This is something that Fluffy spotted and went, I want. She says, I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. No, I said, Gimme, me, mine. Oh, it's that effect. And, uh, I took one look at it and she, I said, well, if you buy that, you won't understand a word of it. And what did you say? Yeah. She still wanted it. And it is the Star Trek Arcade Machine Owner's Manual. This, I think, is worthy of a technical video by itself. Uh, it is actually the service manual for the original Star Trek uh, arcade, uh, what do they call it? Mission Simulator or something. But this is the Deluxe Game Kit Owner's Manual, so that's the one with the chair where you sit down. You can go on YouTube and there are videos of this showing the cabinet. It's, it's quite something and it's quite rare. And so is this manual. But uh, it's good for me also because it shows you how to analyse stuff, how the thing works. It talks about how the CRTs work how the uh, motherboard logic works, so there's quite, there I go, theory of operation. So there's quite a bit in this for me to read, and I've actually sat at work and had a read of this, much to the uh, amusement of other people. But there we go. So, I think this might be worthy of a video of itself, if you're interested, let me know in comments, and I shall make a separate video for that one. Also, possibly worthy of a separate video, I couldn't turn this one down, from, ah, Retro Clinic, ah, Retro Clinic, that's the guy who chased me, that's the guy who bought these, Star Trek, that, and the Star Trek Online, and something else, which is coming up in a moment, he, yes, he uh, managed to enlighten us of quite a bit of my birthday money. Uh, so, this is the concise BBC Microcomputer Service Manual, this is actually a new edition, well, it was in 2010, I think it was, he did this one, 2011, January 2011. So this is a, a new publication, and obviously goes through uh, fixing the uh, BBC Micro. So what I'm going to do is drop him an email and see if he's happy for me to have a, a uh, wander through this to show you more about it, and then perhaps uh, oh, it's advertising him and a video for me. So yes, we have a separate video on that one. So that's quite good, that one. Now, next up, working our way up, and we're now on to hardware. So next up we have a plasticky leather bag. Yay! And you'll see magic words on it. Tandy 102. Portable computer. That. Oh, I forgot about that thing. Fluffy's got in her hands there. I'll show you that afterwards. That is a lie. Because this is... A Tandy TRS-80 Model 100. As far as I'm aware, this is classed as the world's first portable stroke laptop computer. And dates originally from 1983. This particular one has uh, warranty seals on the back from... Uh, 26th of the 11th, 1985. So this may have been somebody's Christmas present. Uh, so, yes, I'm not going to fire this up, because this is, once again, good enough for a, its own video. But this has actually been in use by me. Uh, those of you who are aware of the Sun workstation we have upstairs, we've been using this as a serial terminal to uh, boot it and set its configurations without it going into the main operating system. And 
after making this video in the next few days, we're actually going to set this up so the sun talks to this, this acts as a serial terminal, and this will talk to a printer and print out a hard copy of all the tests that it's doing. So it does still have its uses all these years later. Great, eh? So no more about that, because that's going to be in a separate video. Also for a separate video, oh, hang on, I'll quickly show you this one. Fluffy has in her hands here, if I can just get it off her for a moment. She's snarling at me. She wants her Sonic and Knuckles back. Sonic and Knuckles! Which game is it you plug into this Sonic 1? Or? 1 or 2. 1 or 2. Sure? Yes. Yeah. You can plug Sonic 1 or 2 into this, top of this one, and it gives you Knuckles as well. Can you play as Knuckles? Yes. Or do you just follow you? No, you can play as Knuckles. Oh, okay. Uh, got this for £3. The store next to it, where we got this from, had it for £15, so, yes, assembled in the so UK. So it tells me that hmm. one may have remained unsold. Yes. Well, might have sold after this one sold. Somebody might have sold. Well, 15 quid, a bargain. Hmm. But probably not. That was one of, hasn't heard of <coughs> one of the things this year, uh, replay, the software seemed to be expensive, the hardware was cheap, which suited me, but didn't suit others. Uh, just a reference, that was £30 uh, at the beginning of the show, but I, uh, I left it. And later in the show, uh, he grabbed me and he says, you can have it for 20 So, we had it for 20 <laughs> Bargain! And it works fine. Uh, and the last thing, and quite of interest to a lot of people, is this thing which doesn't fit in the camera. Uh, Hey, it's like the wind's blowing stuff around. It's an Amstrad GX 4000. Quite rare. And we saw this. And I have my birthday money on me. And uh, £40 at a store that usually overcharges for hardware. So my first thought was, it doesn't work. But it does. It did. He says, yes, it does work. You can have it for £40. It's got... It's all the original stuff, it's got the console obviously, the burning rubber, two things, uh, the cables, the adapter, uh, all in the polythene, and all the instructions, even the warranty thing, but I'm not going to show you around it because this definitely is getting its own video. There's a lot of controversy around this uh, system, because uh, it was a flop, so they only made 15,000. We'll discuss more about that in its main video, but that's the other one that we've got. And uh, yes, that's it for me play, apart from a bad stomach, because I overgorged on crap food. But Who's, I enjoyed it. Whose fault's that? Yours. Me? Yeah. How's my fault? I don't know. I'll think something later. So. It's your fault, you ate it. <laughs> No, there, there, there yourself. Yeah, I will later. <laughs> okay, so thank you much. I'm now going to go and play. Oh, hello, you can see the camera in there. Hello, Fluffy. Ah! Wow, look at these advanced graphics. Look, program. Look at that. Look, wow, advanced graphics. It almost looks like Fluffy. Excellent. Look at, the, look at the quality of the graphics. It's almost video like. Wow, that's amazing for a 1985 computer. It is. It is. Alright, so thank you very much. You need to put it in a dirty. You're a dirty boy. <laughs> Alright, so thank you very much. Bye. Bye.